It's in our community. The multi-talented Fox 5 journalist Jesse Burkett Hall is sharing the story of Guns Down Friday. Maurice's death was really the start of Guns Down Friday when it comes to service and community. A lot of the times it hurts because the families I work with, I never met the kid. A little Mo was 15 years old. Uh, he was going inside of this grocery store. Yeah, and you know what? That is interesting. She says the family she works with, she never met the kid because she um, comes around after the the, the the crime has already happened. So she doesn't know these kids. Mm, that's interesting, man. Service and community. A lot of the times it hurts because the families I work with, I never met the kid. A little Mo was 15 years old. Uh, he was going inside of this grocery store to get eggs for his family. I think about mom, ma Mama Mo coming to the store. Uh, and when she comes, she comes and gives this picture a hug. Maurice was such a bright kid, uh, loved by his community. My name is Maurice Scott with Somerset Preparatory Academy, the video production program. This was I the like first community um, that I worked in. I came from Indiana. Uh, my mother, she was a abused by my father so we moved here for safety um and it was rough growing up it was very rough growing up in my community i grew up in a neighborhood called 520. uh i seen deaths every week uh witness shootings and it was it was nothing to me i had my daughter damn smash Nice looking sun sister, man. Witness shootings, black stand, man. Every week. I'm listen, I didn't grow up in a neighborhood like that. But every week. But if you want to say the entire neighborhood, yes. In the entire neighborhood, um, the area you could see some things, but not every nah, not every week. I didn't grow up in no area like that. But um, yeah, man, sun sister, man called 520 uh i seen deaths every week uh witness shootings and it was it was nothing to me i had my daughter at 17 uh but i didn't let that stop me i i knew i wanted to join the military i knew the military would change my life in the air force i worked mortuary uh, i was on the search and recovery team uh when i came home from the war i realized dc was worse than a war zone and that's when I knew I wanted to create change. What sparked me to create Guns Down Friday was the series of deaths. It was so many kids dying in D.C. It hurts so bad. It hurts. It hurts. I would never be the same. It was so many shootings. I think they should pass the laws for guns, for guns and get them off the street. I think about Stormaya Jackson. She was 12 years old. Uh, she committed suicide. I'm devastated. My first reaction, I couldn't understand. Why my baby? Why? When we first started, every Friday, kids were getting shot. I went to a, a rally and... I feel like when someone is shot, everyone comes out, everyone supports. Uh, so the community came up with something called Guns Down Friday. And every Friday we plan to go to different neighborhoods to service uh, families. I started, I brought my Guns Down Friday mobile tribal unit uh, to a neighborhood called 10th Place. And we would, um, every Friday, we would pull up to uh, Mama Mo. We would pull up to the entire neighborhood, uh, asking, "Do they need snacks? Uh, do they need mental health resources? Uh, going on trips? Uh, we do, did, and do all we can for these kids." So you twist that and tell the. That's awesome, man. You noticed that when we went to the, if you were here last night when we went to the um, poor neighborhood in West Virginia, man. They don't have these type of programs, man. They don't have these type of programs in those poor glider neighborhoods, man. Why you gliders don't have these type of programs, man? Uh, 
I need to get like the sons, man. Shout, shout out to uh, Ramasa. It's not. It's more safe living under the Taliban than in Blackistan. Press one, one. Mm. They come through the hood and they give away free stuff. This is awesome, man. And then they try to. There's really nothing you can do about the the, the violence, though up to the entire neighborhood uh, asking, do they need snacks? Uh, do they need mental health resources? Uh, going on trips? Uh, we do did and do all we can for these kids. And so you twist that until the bleeding stops. So one of our main uh, resources is our Stop the Bleed class. And um, our Stop the Bleed class, we're teaching children, we're teaching families, we're teaching shooters uh, what to do if someone is shot. And um, Yo, bless this lady's heart, man. Bless this lady's heart. This is what I was talking about. This is what you need in Blackistan, man. Bless this woman's heart, man. This woman's a true hero. Because you really can't do anything about the violence, man. If you're not going to lock them up, D.C. has taken a tack where they're not going to lock up the criminals. They're not going to um, enforce the laws once they, the prosecutor's not going to enforce the law. So the only way you can really save life is things like this. It's the only way you can save life. Up to the entire neighborhood uh, asking, do they need snacks? Uh, do they need mental health resources? Uh, going on trips? Uh, we do did and do all we can for these kids. And so you twist that until the bleeding stops. So one of our main uh, resources is our Stop the Bleed class. And um, our Stop the Bleed class, we're teaching children, we're teaching families, we're teaching shooters uh, what to do if someone is shot and um, how to use a tourniquet, what to do if you don't have a tourniquet. And sadly, several of our children have come back saying, Miss Hardy, you know, we had to we had to make our own tourniquet or we used the tourniquet that you gave us um, to help with our gunshot wound. I think about our de-escalation. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Um, I, I, this is a program that I like, man. Y'all know I'm not big in the programs, but, but I like this program, man. I like this program. This is a good program. <laughs> this is a good program, man. I I like this program, man. No, but but listen, listen, man. Listen. This is a good program. I, I like this program. This is this is necessary. You need stuff like this. You need programs like this, man. All that other bullshit. All that other bullshit. The whole um all other the the horse shit. Programs that we see. Nah, man. This is what you need. Go in there and show them sun turns how to fucking tie a tourniquet. How to do chest compressions, man. The Heimlich maneuver, CPR. Um, this is a great program. Salute to this system, man. Salute to this system, man all we can for these kids and so you twist that until the bleeding stops so one of our main uh resources is our stop the bleed class and um our stop the bleed class we're teaching children we're teaching families we're teaching shooters uh what to do if someone is shot and um how to use a tourniquet what to do if you don't have a tourniquet and sadly several of our children have come back saying miss hardy you know we had to we had to make our own tourniquet or we used the tourniquet that you gave us um, to help with our gunshot wound. I think about our de-escalation class that we have. We're a referral hub for therapy. We have an allowance system and you have to go to school and able to get an allowance. We've purchased the head. Yeah. 
And here's the problem with that, though, in neighborhoods like this. Neighborhoods like this, going to school is treacherous, man. There's different crews and different rivals and bullies and all that stuff. So a lot of kids don't want to go to school because their school might be in a rival's neighborhood. I've seen that with my own eyes. I've seen kids deprived of education because their school was was in a rival neighborhood's the, the school that they fed, that their uh, junior high school fed into or the, the elementary school fed into, that was actually in the neighborhood that they had beef with community. And I've seen kids, charter schools stop that a lot. Shout out to charter schools because charter schools allowed those kids. I'm talking about back in the day when you just had public schools and private schools. And, you know, a lot of sons couldn't afford private school. So you just had to go to the school that you was that you were zoned for. But since charter schools came around, that helped that helped that situation out a lot. Um, to help with our gunshot wound. I think about our de-escalation class that we have. We're a referral hub for therapy. We have an allowance system and you have to go to school and able to get an allowance. We've purchased the headstone for Dion K, uh, for Andre, uh, so many children, Kevo, DeMarcos, um, a lot of these families, um, you know, the, the funerals are paid for and um, the burial is paid for, but a lot of times they forget about the headstone.